I'm Colleen Maiko. Welcome to Planted. I'm here with Lisa Connolly, certified professional horticulturist and owner of Lisa's Leaves and My Greenhouses in Port Orchard. And one of the things Lisa is known for is her forever baskets. Here is a forever basket getting started. It's something that you would hang out in your yard. As soon as your petunia baskets or your fuchsia baskets are all done, it's something that you could have year round. This is going to be a great episode with fun, hands-on stuff. Lisa and I are gonna show you how to propagate your favorite plants, how to make funky bowls, and Lisa's gonna share why she's so passionate about gardening. Stay to the end of the episode and we'll show you how to make a forever basket. Looking forward to it. It's a beautiful day for gardening, so let's get rolling. Fancy yourself a plant parent? Then this episode of Planted is for you. So Lisa is nuts for plant propagation, which is the art and science of creating plant babies, or more technically speaking, making new plants from a variety of sources like seeds, division, and other plant parts like roots. So you take a lot of stem cuttings in particular. What do you love about it? I love it because it's so successful um, and you can grow so many new plants. Uh, so many varieties, um, and then you get to share all these wonderful plants. What are the basic supplies that you need to propagate? I have it very basic. I have a flat of pumice. I always use pumice. I always use a root tone. I have a poker, and I have sharp scissors. My spritzer always. Not a lot of things. We are in a greenhouse that's full of plants that you have started. Do you remember the first plant that you ever propagated? I think I do. I think it was at the nursery. We used to grow hundreds of fuchsia baskets and everything, and you'd always have to be pinching them and everything. So all those cuttings, we made more fuchsia starts with and everything. So they're a great and easy um, plant to propagate. It was successful. Yeah. Well, so now that you've done thousands of plant propagations, what are your favorites for ease and beauty? Hydrangeas are one of my favorite favorites because um, it's a perennial. It just takes so well. It roots easy and everything. Stevia has been really fun to do for the kids, friends, family. It's a great um, annual herb in the garden that tastes like sugar. It tastes delicious and everyone loves it. It's mm. fun to give to people and it propagates great. Cool. Well, I've never yeah. grown stevia, so this will be fun. It's fun. Nice. All right. So let's take some cuttings then. Let's do. Show us how to do it. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, I use this season's cutting. I don't do um, hard cuttings. I do this spring's cutting. So if I were to go in there, I cut a couple of good cuttings and I'm going to take off some bottom leaves. I'll put her in some water. You always want to keep them moist. Nice. And our stevia, let's get some cuttings here. And you don't want that lush, 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 too lush. So we're gonna go down a little bit and we'll get those in water. And these are gonna be our new cuttings. Super, tell us about the timing. The timing is you know, during their growing period and everything, which is now. Uh, so you got on the new growth and then you you know, do the cutting. The cutting will root within two, three weeks, and then you'll find that they've rooted, and then you can transplant them. Perfect. So now that we have our cuttings, what's next? I will show you. So on the stevia, she's pretty lush on the top. So on the top, I'm going to take her down a bit because too lush. And where where are you cutting to? I am cutting to it feels a little bit firmer. So you have the new growth was really lush. So you're going down to a little bit sturdier growth, your pattern in here and everything. And it doesn't get down to woody. So you're going to be really good. Just none of that lush stuff up on top and everything. You cut all your big leaves in half. So your plant has less to work with when it's trying to grow all those roots. And you're going to cut into one cavity around the bottom, very little, very little. And you're going to dip into your root tone. And I like to have my pokey stick and poke your hole so that your root tone stays on. 
and get it in your started soil, which is moist, and then you always keep them spritzed. They don't like to dry out. So that is a cutting of stevia. Like I said, you take off your new growth. And you're cutting back the top stem to a node, right? I am. And then the bigger leaf too, I'm cutting back so that it's less work for the plant to work on those roots. So the less foliage you have on a cutting, the more work it can do growing a root for you. So taking off just that one cavity. So you're almost um, peeling a little yeah, bit off. A little bit. And you don't want to go too deep into her either. Put your root tone on and I make my nice little hole. Get her in there so she has all her root tone on her. Tuck her in snug as a bug. And hydrangeas, you're going to take out your middle, okay? Take out your middle because that's your new growth and you don't want that. Um, all of these big leaves, on hydrangeas it's gonna be all your leaves, you're gonna cut down so that it's less work for your plant to do your cutting because you want it to grow roots and not keep these leaves alive. You want it to grow roots. So getting it ready, cutting into it, into this one cavity, your root tone, your pokey, and get her in there snug as a bug. And you just keep them spritzed. And when you get your whole flat filled, you bring her to your heating tray. Little bit of heat, little bit of light, a bunch of spritzing. How important is humidity? Moisture on them is extremely important. Um, and it's a lot. I wish I had a system that went on at the nursery that was a you know, sprinkling system and everything, but um, spritzing a lot and everything. Um, the more spritzing you do, you know, little water is better than a lot of water and everything. So spritzing is very important. Yes, yes. And how important is keeping the pumice moist? When you first start your whole flat and everything, your, your flat will be quite moist and everything. As the two weeks go on on everything, it actually gets lighter and lighter and everything because it's using your moisture and it's you know, growing its roots and everything. But you don't keep your pumice as wet as, as when you started and everything because you're spritzing and it's working really hard to grow roots for you and everything. So it's not, it's not very wet you know, at the very end as I get started with. Now that we've got all these plant babies, yes. let's talk about rooting and how we know whether they've rooted and... Well, great. This flat I did probably two, three weeks ago, and they are two different hydrangea starts that I love. Um, and as you can see, like this guy is rooted. So you know that she's ready to transplant and then she'll be ready to plant in someone's yard by spring. Here. You can have that one. Oh, thank you. I yes. love this. Yes, she's Nico Blue. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That's a beautiful hydrangea. And this is why we love to propagate plants, yes, right? Yes, yes. So that we can share. Exactly, exactly. There's nothing better. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Can you tell other than digging it up if it's rooted? Yes, when you go up to your flat and everything, if you can go up to her and you can feel her like that and she's snug as a bug inside there and everything. You're tugging a little bit yeah, and you, you feel some resistance? And you can, yes, and you can, you can actually feel that she is rooted, whereas, you know, it's completely different. But you can feel that she's rooted, you know, and it's wonderful feeling. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, you can feel Did it. you do these cuttings at the same time as you did these? Yes. Okay. And yes. these haven't grown any, so that's how you know that they haven't rooted. Right. Exactly. You see the total difference. Well, this is wonderful. Thank you for demonstrating. And we appreciate you sharing your expertise about propagating with our viewers. And we want to remind people that every plant is different and some plants propagate from different methods and some are easier than others. They are, they're so different. Yeah, so make sure you look up your plant and see what methods are best so that you can be successful with the uh, plant that you choose to propagate. Thanks, yes. Lisa. Thank you, thank you. Lisa, being the super creative person she is, has combined making concrete stepping stones with her love for thrifting and reuse. 
to come up with funky bowls. Yes, funky bowls are really fun. Um, anyone can make them, your grandkids, your girlfriends. Um, you can use them for anything too. You can make them for you know, kids' toys, hors d'oeuvres, uh, cheese and crackers. And all you need is bowls. I get lots at the Goodwill, St. Vince. Dollar Store has a lot of treasures. The beach, your shells, anything to do your decorating that feels good to you. Well, that's wonderful. So it seems like you've got everything that you need to give us a class. So let's start with the supplies. All you're going to need is a pie pan. And I cover it with a Ziploc bag. And from a Ziploc bag, you're going to have your um, concrete, water, gloves, your set. Let's start mixing. Okay, let's do. And this is your topping mix. So all we're going to need is some water, and we're going to mix it up to the consistency of cake mix. Okay. I'll that pour all for you, and you stir, and you tell me when. Okay. Perfect. Pour, pour, pour. All right. And it's okay. easy to get a little too much water, isn't it? Fast, too. It's amazing. Yeah. A little bit more. And you can make up to, you know, like 12 at a time, too. If you get all your stuff already and you're making a batch of them, you can see I've made batches for certain people that want like a six of something. A little bit more. Okay. Um, yeah, I see you've got some that you've got four plates that match. So yep. you're going to do four that are all the same, yep, right? So you have them all ready to go at the same time. Nice. So you just have all your decor ready. You just lay them right out. It only takes a minute to make them. A little bit more. Okay, I think we have a good consistency here. Excellent. So are we ready to fill the pie tin? We are. Let Super. me have your pie tin and get it in there. And then just tap her on the table to set her down. Is that enough? Nope. A little bit more. A little bit more. She looks good. Tap her down. Okay. And then put on your right. bowl that you picked out. Right. And so mine's a little shallow and flat. So I probably need more concrete than maybe if I had a big deep bowl, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Just put her how you want her to set. Sink it in a little bit. Sink her in a little bit. A little press. All right. She's in there. And then you decorate. Cool. Which bowl did you pick? I picked out a kind of a, to me, it looks like, kind of like a happy hour. I'm going to make cheese and cracker plates. Oh, nice. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So... You're going to drop yours in there? I'm going to drop mine in there. Push in a little bit. Excellent. And she's ready to decorate. Gems. Pieces of glass, shells, yes. whatever we have? Whatever we have. Whatever feels good. Okay. I'm going to try these little chunks and of see, I have glass. two more of the same ones. I could make two more and I could fill up... For a table on my picnic table, one with cheese, one with crackers, one with meats. You're making me hungry. I know it, it will be ready. <laughs> I think and people love little treasures. That's my, oh, yeah, don't they? Kids yeah. especially, right? You see the Legos. Uh -huh. One time, Mason and Cam both came, and they bought their Matchbox cars and have their Matchbox cars all over inside of them and everything. It was hysterical. I can see yeah. Army Men, yes. Plastic Dinosaurs. Oh, Army Men would be a good one, too. <laughs> yeah, I'll set up. That'd be a good one. Yeah, yeah. See, like my treasure. I love it. What are you going to do with yours? Uh, I think I'm going to put mine on my patio table with a tea light. I like the tea light thing. I haven't done tea light ones. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, perfect. This is so fun. It is I so I think this fun. is something that anybody can do, right? Anybody can do. Yes. It's okay. fun. It's easy and cheap. Wonderful. <laughs> this is great. And our local viewers can come take a class on how to make funky bowls with Lisa at Lisa's Leaves in My Greenhouses. Yes. Um, and take other classes too. Thank you. Thank you. Fun. Hi, Lisa. Hi there. I'm excited to have a conversation with you about gardening. You're one of the most enthusiastic gardeners that I know. Yes. It's a bit of, a bit of a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we're going to hear your rooster in the background here. So I thought I'd let our viewers know that if they hear that noise, that it's just 
part of being in your garden, in your space, right? It is. <laughs> it is a brand new rooster. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you about what age you were when you started gardening and what your memories are from that time. Probably like five or seven and we'd all moved into a house just up the road and there's six siblings. We all got our own first uh, fruit tree. So I remember all of our fruit trees and I remember we had huge gardens and everyone everyone had their own area to weed and everything. So you'd have to weed your area before you could go swim in the pool for the summer. That's a motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> gardens got weeded <laughs> and then we could swim. Uh, that's wonderful. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. How wise your parents were. <laughs> I know, they were, really. <laughs> well, when you and I first met, you were working at the Port Orchard Nursery, which is where the South Kitsap Helpline is now. And that was your family's business. Yes. But when it closed, you opened your own nursery. So what is it about the nursery business that just hooked you? I don't know anything different, and I love it. Um, it makes me feel really good. I love helping people with plants. I love to garden. Um, I just don't think there's anything about plants I just dislike, except for slugs and weeds. <laughs> <laughs> yep, those are two things. Yeah, right? those are two things. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you meant just fabulous people, too. I do. Gardening people are really nice people. I mean, I, I, I personally, I think I know all my customers. I mean, the first thing I want to do when I meet them is I ask if I can come to their house. And they were like, what? <laughs> I'm like, well, give me a feel for what you're doing and I can help you more, you know, and everything. So they're staying on when I want to take my day off and come to their house. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite the personal touch. I know. It's kind of a train. <laughs> it, but it works. It works really well. I'm sure they yeah, love it. Yeah. Well, so, okay. So nursery, landscape design, installation, maintenance, these are all things you do for your customers professionally, but also here at home. Uh, what do you love about being a gardener? I love being outside. I love that you can grow so much and have so much and provide so much, and it brings me a lot of happiness. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I could not not garden. <laughs> Well, being here at your beautiful eight-acre property and seeing the space and all of the beauty, it makes sense that you would want to be here and be yeah, outside. Yeah, I pretty much love being at home. <laughs> and that's really good about having my nursery at home, too, so I can take care of everything here. So it's nice. Very convenient. Yeah. Good yeah. plan. Yeah. <laughs> So I have had the pleasure of meeting and seeing lots of pictures of your kids and grandkids. And I know you do a lot of gardening with them. What is it that you hope they get out of and learn from the process of gardening from you? I hope that they get the whole idea how good gardening is and that they want to do it too. I mean, I hope that they get that same wonderful feeling that I get. I think they do. They are always out here with me. <laughs> Well, so you had fruit trees growing up. Do they have fruit trees too? The first thing both the kids did when they bought their properties was get fruit trees. And every season they say, Mom, we come over and prune my fruit trees. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they all have fruit trees on their properties. And last year, CJ's family got lots of fruit on their fruit trees. It was kind of fun. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, I know they do a lot of your little classes and crafts with you here. They do. They do. We had a birthday party. We all made hyper tufas. <laughs> and we were done making the hyper tufas with all the grandbabies and grandmas and moms, too. We made fairy gardens out of them. It was really special. It was fun. Oh, yeah. I bet. Yeah. yeah. And they all got to take them home. Yep, they do. Yeah. Yeah. I so love it's fun. That. Yeah. Because we all have fairy gardens, too. <laughs> Well, this is kind of a, a fairy garden in yeah, itself. I mean, this yeah. place is magical. <laughs> it's very, very, very home. Yeah. Tell me if you can narrow it down. What are your favorite plants? Oh, it changes. It changes. <laughs> but um, right now it is the lilies, I think, because they smell so good. And my hydrangeas. I've just fallen head over heels with hydrangeas because there are so many varieties now. And they're great for bouquets. You can dry them, you know, make crafts with them. Um, and then I propagate them like crazy. Love hydrangeas. How many kinds of hydrangeas would you say you have here on your property? I bet maybe 10, 15 different varieties. <laughs> A lot. Anything else about gardening and how it makes you feel or why you think it's important? I just think it's important to garden and grow your own food and 
to be outside. I love it. I would never go in my house if I didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I live outside. <laughs> I know, in the summer, you've got a whole area set I, up for sleeping outside. I, I know. Yeah, if I can sleep out there for five to six months, it's good. I'm not going to make six months this year, though. The spring was too yucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful having you here. Oh, I just always enjoy talking with you about gardening and what, what a beautiful space this is. Thank you. Thanks thank again. you. again. Thank you, Lisa, for letting us hang out in your garden and beautiful nursery. It's been a blast, too, to make stuff with you because your enthusiasm is infectious. And before we finish up, we promised our viewers more about your forever baskets. Forever baskets are wonderful. We make a lot of them. As soon as your basket from the season starts getting yucky, you'll start wanting to um, take out the done things, put in hookeras, grasses, ferns, um, ivies are great. Jannies are great, things to hang off the edge. And then as the season goes, you can always add in a primrose or a pansy, you know, early spring and stuff and everything. But then you always have a basket hanging in your yard year round with color. I love it. Well, local viewers can visit Lisa's Leaves in my greenhouses to learn how to make your own forever basket. But remember that she has limited hours, so it's best to check her Facebook page first. And until our next episode of Planted, don't forget, the more you grow, the more you'll know. Links for this episode are posted in the video description.